We've been covering DNS and we're going to take a look at a dynamic update and secure dynamic update. And both of these require um, you know, deep cooperation between DNS and DHCP. And I haven't added the DHCP server role yet, so I need to do that. And I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail on DHCP. Um, I've done other tutorials on DHCP and if you're curious and you want to look for this, you can. But I just need to add the role right now. And I'm just going to do a minimal configuration. Um, remember, DHCP is a service that dynamically assigns IPs to host when they boot up and they need an IP address. Um, in this case, I want to serve them out over this interface, 192.7.13.150. And that's my parent domain. I'm going to go through. I'm not going to use WINS. That's just legacy for backwards compatibility with older. Um, I need to set up my scope. So I'm going to do... call it the colonial fleet and I'll start at 199.207.13. I'm going to do start out at 180 and end at 240. 199.207.13.240. I mean you know you can do any range you want that's valid for your subnet mask. I'm using a standard class C subnet mask so 1 to 254 would be my valid range but I have in the 150 area I've got static IPs and I don't want to create an IP conflict so you have to kind of figure out what settings are right for you configure my gateway All right, so I want to add my IPs and things in and I'm going to go ahead and I'll leave this option here to activate the scope when it's done and I'm going to click next I'm going to disable DHCP version 6 stateless mode for this server don't need it, we're just doing IP version 4 I'm going to use the uh, current credentials here and I'll try to get the wizard to authorize it in Active Directory Directory Services. Um, you can do both of these as separate steps. You can activate the scope and you can authorize it as separate steps, but I'll see if the wizard can do it and if we have any problems then we'll, maybe we'll just go in and manually authorize and activate those things. Sometimes the wizard works right. All right, installation succeeded, and I'll click close, and I'm going to close Server Manager, and my MO, I need to add a uh, add another icon to my icon form, but I like shortcuts. And I'm going to throw this guy over here, DHCP, and I'm going to open DNS right beside it, and we'll look at this this very tight knit close cooperation between these two services for a dynamic and secure dynamic update. Now with DHCP, I just want to make sure it's authorized. So I have a green arrow, so I'm good. If I didn't, I'd have to right click and say authorize. And my scope is activated, and so I'm ready to start leasing addresses from my address pool. And I just want to make sure of that, otherwise again, I could activate my scope as a separate step. If I go here and here, notice that there's a DNS tab here, and we're going to talk about this. And then I'm also going to go here in my forward lookup zone and go to properties and we're going to look at this tab. So what is dynamic update and what is secure dynamic update and what is no dynamic update and why do you need it? Um, well first off, if I didn't do any dynamic update at all, um, if I were in a paranoid environment, in other words a hyper secure environment where I really had to harden things and, and lock servers down, that might be a good security option. But it's not very convenient because if I'm not doing any kind of dynamic update, that means I literally have to manually create every single A or quadruple A record if I'm using IP version 6, um, you know, alias, uh, pointer record, whatever. I have to manually create all of this. And that can be time consuming and tedious and just, you know, probably not worth the effort unless you simply need that extra measure of security. Okay, so that's one extreme. And the other extreme would be if I allowed non-secure and secure. Well, okay, I'm going to allow dynamic updates, but that means just anybody can come into my network, you know, with any laptop, any machine, they can boot up. And what that does is it gives them the ability to automatically 
register their host name, you know, so create an A record, uh, which is a host name to IP mapping on my DNS server. Once my DHCP server over here leases them an IP address or assigns them an IP address. So a hacker could wreak havoc with that. He could pollute and he could come in and using dynamic update in my DHCP server, he could fill my DNS server up with, you know, bad A records, or he could try, you know, spoofing our man in the middle attacks by, you know, creating duplicate A records that match uh, host names of key servers offering services on my network. I mean, there's all kinds of things he could do, you know, pollute my, my DNS cache. And, um, so to guard against that, there is sort of a compromise or, you know, a third option. And that is secure dynamic update or secure only dynamic update. And while this option means that just anybody could create an A record, they could reboot and, you know, doesn't matter. If I choose this option, then only people who have been joined to the domain. In other words, they have a computer account and Active Directory users of computers. All right. In other words, they, you know, they went and they joined our domain. Um, which meant that what they had to have domain admin or enterprise admin, you know, somebody had to have administrative privileges to be able to join that computer to the domain, that workstation, that laptop, whatever it is. And so that's that doesn't bulletproof things, but it makes it a lot more difficult. At least it adds an extra step, so it kind of hardens our security a little bit. That way, a hacker just can't come in and and start, you know, using dynamic update to create bad A records. He would at least have to compromise you know an administrative account or steal a password so we'll look at you know some of these different options um you know none is sort of self-explanatory let's look at this option first non-secure and secure so i'm going to go ahead and click on ok and enable that there and again i'm going to go over here and look just look at some of the options on the dhcp server remember that the, the idea behind dynamic update and secure dynamic update is that dns and dhcp work hand in hand so we looked at the DNS server settings. Look at the DHCP server settings. By default, enable DNS dynamic updates according to the settings below is enabled. If I didn't want to enable it, I could untick that, of course. But notice the option dynamically update DNS A and pointer records only if requested by the DHCP clients. So, and for most modern operating systems, you know, Vista, Windows 7, modern versions of Linux, they're going to request that. So that's fine. Um, Windows XP. But if I wanted to make things backwards compatible for older operating systems, maybe older versions of Windows or Linux, I could also select this option. Always dynamically update DNS, A, and pointer records. And this is a good option to leave checked. Discard A and pointer records when lease is deleted. Whatever the default lease is, six days, three hours, whatever. I don't want my DNS server to fill up with you know old information that's no longer accurate. Um, it's just sitting there wasting memory. So that's a nice option to kind of keep my DNS server clean. And then following this option down here, I can check dynamically update DNS and pointer records for DHCP clients that do not request updates. And that would be like, again, for you know older operating systems that you know are not going to request an update per se. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna leave these options checked here and I'm gonna click on OK. And notice that I haven't leased any addresses yet. So I have a Windows 7 client, and we're going to boot it up. And of course, it's called Starbuck, going with our BSG theme here. And let's look at what happens under this setting here on the DNS server, again, which is non-secure and secure. It's not a member of, of the domain yet, but because of this setting here, that's not required. It should still be allowed to automatically create its A record. All right, so let's go test this one out. And then a little bit later, we'll test out secure dynamic update and see the difference. First, let's try a non-secure and secure dynamic update. Now, since the very first one we're going to do is non-secure and secure, I'll need to specify on the DHCP server, um, you know, the credentials or who has permission to dynamically update the server. And I'm going to use the domain admin account. And of course, the domain would be battlestars.galaxy and the password and then you can see that there's no A record here for Starbuck okay so we're gonna go over to the Windows 7 client and we're gonna boot it up 
and see what happens. See if we get our non-secure dynamic update in this example. Boot up a client, leave that IP address via DHCP, and test that an A record was created automatically. In this example, the client is not joined to the domain, so it does not have a computer account in Active Directory. However, since non-secure dynamic updates are allowed, it should automatically create its A record in DNS. Alright, so we're going to boot up our Windows 7 client with a host name of Starbuck. And this client's not part of the domain. So there's no computer count for it in Active Directory users and computers. But in this example, it won't be a problem because we're allowing secure and non-secure. So I've logged in and let's just look at the properties and verify that we're not joined to the domain. So I'm not joined to the domain. Just part of a work group called Colonial Fleet, and I'm a host. But I did, let's see if I leased an IP on the client side. I use IP config all. And DHCP has been enabled in this case, yes. And I leased an IP address 192.7.13.180 from the server. So let's hop back on over to the server and see what happened. Going back to the server, even though the client was not a domain member, it updated DNS with an A record since non-secure dynamic updates are allowed. We're back on the server. I'm just going to click refresh. And notice that you know here under address leases, my DHCP server did lease out that IP address. Here's the FQDN or fully qualified domain name, Starbuck Battlestars Galaxy. And if I come over here to my DNS server and click refresh, notice that it added an A record. So it did dynamic update wasn't a secure dynamic update, but it did dynamic update, even for a host that was not joined to the domain. And also, remember that I had to supply for this, I had to supply the credentials. Okay, who has permission to do that on my DNS server? Now, let's switch DNS to secure only dynamic update. Now, for the next option, I'm going to change it to secure only. See how this modifies the behavior. And that's in my DNS server. And on my DHCP server, I'm going to go over here and I want to select uh, DNS. And I'm just going to set things back sort of to the defaults. I'm going to untick this and I'm going to check this over here. OK. And click on OK. And let's set it up. And now, since it's secure only, if I'm not a member of the dom domain and I'm not that workstation, Yes, I can lease an IP, but I should not be able to create an A record. Okay, and we've got rid of the A record here. There's no A record for Starbuck there. So. All right, so let's hop on over and we'll test it, and then we'll come back and see the results. Going back to the Windows 7 client. Okay, so we're back on our Windows 7 client, Starbuck, and um, I could reboot, but I'm just going to do IP config release for new, which will have the same effect. It will release the IP address that we have leased from the DHCP server, and then it will renew it. And in the previous example, it did automatically create an A record, but that's because it was non-secure and secure. Now that it's set to secure, it should not create automatically create an A record, and that's by design. You know, since I'm not a part of the domain, I don't have a computer account, and Active Directory uses the computers, it should deny me the ability to create an A record. Um, you know, thus making my system more secure against people, you know, just coming in on my network and, and trying to pollute my DNS server or, you know, create weird A records and things for various exploits and attacks. So you can see I did lease an IP from the DHCP server. Let's hop over to the 2008 server and see what happened. Now let's return to the DHCP DNS server and see what happened. Okay, so I renewed my lease. Let me refresh. You can see I leased the IP from the DHCP server. There's my FQDN. But if I come over here and I click refresh, notice now there's no A record. There's no Starbuck there. And the reason is, again, because I'm doing secure only. And because over here, these are my DNS options. So the way to get my client to update, dynamically update its A record with secure dynamic update enabled is I have to join it to the domain. 
Okay, and that means I have to have a computer account in Active Directory Users and Computers. And so again, if I go here and Active Directory Users and Computers, notice there's no computer account for uh, Starbuck. But when we get done, there will be one there. And in fact, I'll even put a little shortcut here. Shortcut crazy, icon farm. All right, so copy and throw it over there. So let's hop on over to the Windows 7 workstation and we'll join it to the domain. Now let's join the standalone workstation to the Active Directory domain. All right, so we're on Starbuck now. And let's actually make it a member of the domain. We're going to join the domain. So I'm going to go here. And I want to change. And I'm going to select the domain option and So I'm going to do battlestars.galaxy. And I need to supply the domain admin or enterprise admin privileges. So again, this is just an extra step um, you know, that would prevent a hacker or slow a hacker down from trying to pollute your DNS server using dynamic updates. At least this way you have to have credentials to join the domain first. Okay, and welcome to the Battlestars.galaxy domain. And then I'll need to reboot. And once I reboot, now even with secure dynamic update, it'll automatically generate that A record. And rebooting my Windows 7. And um, you know, notice now I can log on to the local host. Um, or let me actually switch. And if I also wanted to, I could log into the domain. I went to Battlestars. But I'll go ahead and log in locally even. And. And logged in locally to Starbuck. Now let's hop on over to the 2008 server and see what happened with Secure Dynamic Update now that we've joined uh, to the domain. Now that our Windows 7 workstation is a member of the domain, let's go back to the server and check for a dynamically updated A record. So let's take a look at what happened. Um, we're on the Galactica. And remember what we did is that we... This time we configured secure only dynamic, dynamic update and we configured our DCP server accordingly. All right, and if I come over here and I do refresh, notice I leased an IP address. All right, here's my FQDM fully qualified domain name for their Starbucks Battlestars Galaxy. Um, and if I go over here and do a refresh, notice that there's two records for Starbucks there's an IP version 4 A record and there's an IP version 6 quadruple A record. And they were both registered automatically, even though I had the secure only option uh, enabled. And the reason is, is because now, since we've joined the Windows 7 host Starbuck uh, to the domain, she has an account in Active Directory Users and Computers. See her Starbuck. So she has permission to, you know, to do that. So just a quick review again. What we've gone over is, um, you know, no d dynamic update. Um, non-secure and secure dynamic update which is kind of wide open kind of a security risk and then secure only dynamic update which is nice because it forces you to have the you know you have to at least have the credentials to join a workstation or a server to the domain before you're allowed to dynamically update any um you know dns information in the dns server